here's something that's uh, not super rare, uh, but uh, something we don't see biopsies of very often, and just kind of a nice example. So anyone can take a shot at it when they think they know what it is. Any takers from there? Oh, someone guessed something. Okay, we got some guesses, good. Yes, yeah, so Dr. Newton, you're right. This is in Pitaigo. And um, it is the epidermis has got a little spongiosis and some reactive changes, but the main finding here is this thick layer of scale crust on the top. And for, for new, new people here, first year, scale crust means a mixture of scale is parakeratosis, this. That's para, so that's the scale. Crust is serum, this stuff, the pink homogenized fluid that's seeped up through the epidermis. And when you have it together, it's scale crust. And that's clinically the scabby, crusty, scaly stuff that you see on the skin um, uh, in weepy sort of skin lesions that dry up. That's what it looks like microscopically. So the mixture of para and serum and neutrophils and inflammatory debris. And then of course in here, look what we have. Nice colonies of cocci bacteria. The individual single bacteria don't stand out quite as well um, on a scan slide, but you can usually see cocci bacteria very nicely on the microscope. Um, they're very uniform and round and they look all just like each other. So this is a nice example of uh, impetigo. And what's the, the common organism that causes impetigo usually? Yeah, so good. So the staph organisms that can, can grow and, and cause impetigo. And, and this is basically that honey colored crust that you see on the patient. Um, this is what that looks like microscopically. Of course, keep in mind that we see secondary impetigo or impetigenization on the surface of the skin in lots of different things. I see it over top of basal cells and excoriations and any sort of ulcerated thing. We also see it in the context of inflammatory dermatoses, particularly like um, spongiotic dermatitis. So um, here they actually, I can't remember why they biopsied it. They did have something else in their differential and they wanted to confirm that this really was in Pitigo. So that's why it got biopsied. And I thought, wow, this is nice because we just, it's usually recognized clinically and treated and not biopsied. Um, so the fact that we got a biopsy of it was really, really useful in this case. And I thought it was a nice example. But um, the secondary uh, impetigenization is what I see much more commonly. And the, uh, the times I report it, I don't always mention when there's impetigenization there. Like if there's bacteria over a basal or an excoriation, does that really matter? There's gonna be bacteria anytime you got an open ulcerated area on the skin. When I mention it, when I'm, I try to make sure I mention it is in the context of inflammatory dermatoses, particularly sponge derm, patients that have atopic dermatitis and then get secondary impetigo change and bacterial overgrowth. Sometimes that can make it a lot harder, of course, to manage their, um, their um, sponge derm, their atopic derm. So applying steroids won't necessarily help because they've got all these bacteria here kind of driving the, um, the inflammatory process, I guess, is my kind of basic understanding. So I know at least some of the dermatologists that train me said that they like to give those patients the bleach bath to kind of decolonize them. I think there are other uh, antibacterial options that, that all of you who are dermatologists know a lot more than me to help uh, reduce the bacterial load on the surface and then allowing you to use those steroids to treat so that's one of those times where mentioning that can actually help the dermatologist uh, better manage the patient. Um, and you know, sometimes we think, oh, it's just a rash, but anyone, anyone here, of course, the derms all know just a rash is, is nonsense. There are some rashes that are severe, miserable quality of life, morbidity issues for patients, even though they're not gonna maybe kill the patient and it's not a tumor, it can still cause dramatic morbidity for patients. Um, and so anything I can do to help uh, the dermatologist figure out a better way to manage a rash or inflammatory process and make the patient better um, is something I try to do. So for the pathologist here, I think that's important. We're often, you know, kind of are afraid of rashes uh, if you're not derm path trained because, you know, there's a lot of different subtleties and nuance. And that's true, but just got, by identifying the inflammatory pattern, having a discussion with the dermatologist, even saying, hey, I'm not a derm path, but here's what I'm seeing. Tell me what of that would fit with what's on your differential and and being willing to, to do what, you know, what's needed to get a diagnosis for them, that can be helpful because, you know, there's a take home point here is that, sorry, I'm, I'm feeling again philosophical today, but the take home point here is that tumors, even if we can't figure it out, the dermatologists and the surgeons have something to do. They go and cut it out and make sure the margins are negative and sew the patient up and we hope for the best. That's not an ideal thing to say, well, it's a bad tumor, we're not sure what it is, but we're gonna do surgery, but there's, a, there's something to do, right? But with a rash, if the rash doesn't go away, 
and we can't figure out what it is, guess what? The patient's still living with the, the rash and maybe really uncomfortable. They're still coming to see the dermatologist and saying, doc, I'm not getting better. So it's a very frustrating situation, a persistent inflammatory dermatosis, frustrating for the patient and for the dermatologist. So um, I always want to do anything I can to help help give as much information as possible in that, in that situation. And I think a lot of times pathologists don't don't think about it from that angle until we've until you've worked with dermatologists and seen you know how, how severe and problematic some of these inflammatory problems can be. So in this case, obviously, uh, this is uh, easily treatable situation in Petigo, but just do keep in mind that all of the things in the in the non-tumor world of dermhap are actually really important, and it's important to not blow them off.